All right, this is my Lab 4 report um, by me, Max McMurray. This lab goes over a spring mass system, and we're going to go over the motion of that system. So we have a spring hanging from a fixed point, and that spring is going to go over a movement where it is oscillating in both the X and Y directions. Um, we're going to use Tracker to track the movement of this spring, and then we're going to use GlowScript to create a computer program and simulate the movement of that spring as well as the energy changes of that model. And then using this, these two, we're going to compare the predicted movement in GlowScript with the observed movement in Tracker. So setting up Tracker, um, we, we have the fixed attachment point at the top. You can see the mass on the bottom um, and then the spring connecting the two. So the origin is located at that attachment point and the length of the spring, at least at this rest, is going to be 0 0.7 meters. The video is lasting 80, 80 or 98 frames, excuse me, um, with 10 and a half frames per second. So the time of this video is going to be 9.3 seconds. Here's just a photo of what happened in Tracker. As you can see with the uh, red dots, the you can see that the spring um, oscillated in both the X and Y directions. So now setting up GlowScript with the initial conditions, what GlowScript is going to do is it's going to allow us to take a CSV file of all those data points that we found in Tracker and put them into a computer model to compare the two. So I was able to take the sample code from Lab 4 and then along with other lectures to complete the initial conditions, um, we have the mass of the spring listed at 0 0.402 kilograms, um, along with the position of the spring at the start of frame five. We also have the initial spring velocity at zero, and then the spring constant, relaxed length and orientation, all in uh, line 75, 78, and 81, were all given to us in the lectures as well as the mass. So we did not have to calculate for that. All right, GlowScript, then later we had to describe the L vector. Um, this is defined in line 84 as the ball position minus the spring position, L being just the displacement length. Um, we also were able to find the direction in L hat along with S the displacement. Um, then also we were able to define the kinetic and potential energy formulas of the spring in lines 89 through 92. Now the main part of the GlowScript code is in the while loop. So this while loop is going to last 9.3 seconds because that's how long our video was. Um, we defined the forces of gravity along with the force of the spring, which are the two forces that are acting, that we assume are acting on this, in this system. Um, we have, I had to input the position and velocity update formulas in lines 120 and 122 in order to estimate the position of the movement for the glow script um, equation. Along with that, I input the kinetic and potential energy formulas that I had earlier in lines 80 and re-input them to let them work in the while loop in lines 133 through 140. Um, and then the total energy is E equals K plus U grav plus U spring, U being potential energy. This is um, my video of the movement. This is the blue ball represents what actually occurred, the movement in tracker, and the red ball is the simulated movement. Here it is again for you. And then this is the data that I received from it. As you can see, I have two graphs right here. Um, blue is the predicted path of the springer, what GlowScript predicted it to be. Um, red then is the observed path of the spring. So you can see here that the blue path is a lot higher up or has a lot less displacement, excuse me, than the, than the observed position. Um, there's a couple things that could really define that uh, in, I guess we could, we could label it as just a miscalculation of gravity, um, but that's what I got there. And then on the right graph, we have orange as the change in potential energy and green is the change in total energy. Now I believe that my green line is correct because this system is not experiencing any external forces, so this system should have zero change in energy. However, though the orange line is a little bit confusing, I tried to play around with it and I couldn't get it to change or oscillate, so that's what I got for it. And then finally, what does this lab mean? 
um, the energy principle is satisfied, that being that the total energy of the system is zero, or the change in energy of the system is zero, and that's because everything that we measured in this lab was in the same system. So the earth, the spring, and the mass were on the system, which means that the force of the spring and the force of the gravity on earth, along with the work and energy and all of these calculations are part of the same system, so the change in energy is zero. And then to estimate the period, we can measure the distance between peaks and troughs from our graph, and this was something I was able to do. So using this, the estimated period from the Y position is 1.5195 seconds, and then the X position, 1.52 seconds. And that's pretty much it. Thank you.